Welcome back, listeners on 1% Better. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, today, we've got Sam here. So Sam is a friend of mine. I met him in Colombia, and he runs ayahuasca retreats. Um, so yeah, thank you for being here, Sam. And uh, yeah, look forward to learning more about what you're doing there. Thank you for the invitation, Brandon. Uh, you know, I like to speak about the subject of ayahuasca as much as uh, as much as necessary. Yeah, like I can talk about it for hours. So podcasts yeah. are great. Yeah, heaps good. All right, awesome. Oh yeah, let's dive into the first question. Super curious. So, how did you discover ayahuasca for the first time? Uh, well, it's a it's a long story, but I think the first thing I recall was when. I was in Ecuador shortly before we met, maybe a year or two before. A friend of mine was, um, he lived in Ecuador, he worked in the UN, and he worked with indigenous people, and he was raving about this this medicine thing that you know, like cures so many things. And because when he, he, when he went to work with those people in the jungle, I guess he tried it a couple of times. So I think he was the first person I heard it from. And then it just kind of, you know, as, as it's really common with ayahuasca, people say it's it's calling for you. It's like mm -hmm. it comes in your life and starts calling you. And in my case, it would be just friends and friends of friends. And just you, you would be coming into the in my in my world and kind of reminding about itself till till the till the right uh, opportunity presented itself. So, yeah, it was not like a one time thing. It was like, oh, I was let's do it. It was just like a slow and gradual bombardment that eventually curiosity became, you know, a plan to action so that, that's how I was always is and it's funny that I went from sort of being in that role myself being uh called to ayahuasca to now a lot of time ayahuasca calling comes through me yeah mm -hmm. through the form of like some marketing message or an invitation to an event and it's interesting so it's a full yeah. uh, full, uh what do you call it full 180 or full 360 full yeah. uh life cycle yeah gotcha Okay, and so I'm not sure if I, I heard correctly, I might have missed it. So did you have your first ayahuasca retreat in Ecuador or you first heard about it in Ecuador? No, I first heard about it in Ecuador. So yeah. uh, when I came back to Colombia, by then uh, I was already curious about ayahuasca and I wanted to try it. Like I was kind of in 50% uh, scared, 50% uh, curious. And uh, so I did it in Colombia. And the, But the funny thing is that the reason I originally called my brand Ayahuasca in Colombia, we, we later rebranded ourselves to La Huayra, is because I didn't know I, there was Ayahuasca in Colombia. I thought Ayahuasca was a thing you do in uh, yeah. Peru or Costa Rica or places like this. And then after I started working with it, I realized that not only it is as traditional in Colombia as it is in Peru, but it's it's even more traditional. And like Costa Rica has nothing to do with Ayahuasca. So And a lot of Ayahuasca in Costa Rica and Mexico is actually from Colombia, not from Peru. Like Colombia is traditionally maybe even more powerful when it comes to ayahuasca than, than Peru. And it, this is sort of huge misconception because of just how tourism mm. happened, maybe because of all the violence that was happening in Colombia. Colombia was largely overlooked for ayahuasca. So when I was in Colombia and I overheard through friends that, oh, you can do ayahuasca in Colombia as well, I, I immediately jumped on the opportunity and then Yep. When the retreat situation happened, I, I was thinking about the names and I just realized like people need to know there is ayahuasca in Colombia. And uh, I think one of the reasons is uh, in Colombia, it's called Jahe, not ayahuasca. Yeah, maybe that's 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 one of the things, uh, one of the reasons people overlook it. But uh -huh. Jahe is ayahuasca. It's basically kind of like saying um, Merlot or Cabernet, you know, uh, it's like a different type, uh, like a slightly different recipe, but it is the the same thing pretty much yeah yeah gotcha oh awesome okay cool and yeah let's dive more into this if you're open so yeah so i want to ask you so why did you start the ayahuasca retreat and i'm specifically wondering if my guess is it's impacted you in some way such that you would want to share it with others right so could you walk me through like yeah, in a bit more detail, like what what you experienced, let's say, on your first ayahuasca, or maybe it was, you know, maybe you've been to a few. What was sort of the most potent, I guess, realization you had or experience that opened you up to wanting to share it more with others? It's interesting. As I reply to your questions, I noticed that my replies are somewhat um, in like not really like simple and not just like a one line 
replies and it's somewhat psychedelic in itself you know it's it's funny but um same with this uh ayahuasca I, I never really decided to start an ayahuasca retreat so it was also once again like a gradual process that sort of happened to me um at first it was i went to the jungle so i, I started drinking ayahuasca at first out of mostly curiosity but i think subconsciously i knew that i was looking for help but i didn't know it back then like I, maybe right. i couldn't really accept it to myself but eventually i came to the realization that yeah, ayahuasca is helping me and it can give me answers and i got i, I was i was in a really bad place mentally meaning i, I was depressed and i yep. was uh like directionless in life and like i was going from doing one thing to doing nothing and i didn't know what to do with my life and it was it was pretty pretty tough i didn't have like conventional support systems or a psychotherapist or something like that so yeah I came to ayahuasca for that, and then eventually I, I felt this calling to go to the jungle to do it. Yeah. And uh, the opportunity presented itself, and then the opportunity sort of, and, I, and then I thought like, oh, maybe I can do it from home. You know, uh, I have this. Uh, I, I was going to drink in different places in Colombia, like a like a country house estate is called uh, finca, and I was living in a finca. And the fincas I would go to drink ayahuasca where the ceremonies were organized were kind of less nice than my finca, and I kind of made me thinking oh maybe i should uh, just try and try and do it from 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 my own home and i can do it better to so then a person coming into my life and saying like how about uh, i do ayahuasca retreats in, in, from your finca and it was kind of like a sign to me that maybe that could happen to so then him saying how about you organize everything and i just come and give the medicine and i had to like start basically start doing the 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 the, the work of a retreat organizer from you know, buying the mattresses and buckets and then all the everything you need for the ceremony firewood to then um, getting people. And then him trying to sort of screw me over uh, resulted to me then then finding another uh, shaman to work with. And then gradually it became an ayahuasca retreat. So it was not like, a, oh, well, let's start an ayahuasca retreat. What a great business idea. Because <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. from the point of view of making money and uh, starting a business, this is a very very difficult business to run and uh maybe maybe we can talk about it later but basically you you generally I, it generally happens to you and um and uh and then one day i found myself as a uh, running an ayahuasca retreat and i i guess uh, i just accepted it but uh, in one of my psychedelic visions with ayahuasca so uh, as you said like it did help me a lot uh, that's why I wanted to continue drinking it, and that's why the retreat happened. But also, you, it also helped me in, in this tough moment. It took away my pain and like showed me a direction. The direction was generally healing people, but it was not specifically like, oh, go go and start an ayahuasca retreat. It was yeah. it was in a slightly different angle. Yeah. But it kind of afterwards, it all kind of made sense. And and if people who've done ayahuasca before or will work with ayahuasca, like I know I sound somewhat. Um, you know flimsy and like indirect but that's how it works like sure. it's all it, it all kind of it all kind of only makes sense after you look at it a few years later and it's like oh, okay now it makes sense but when it's actually happening to you it's not as straightforward sure sure and and do you find your experiences that what i'm curious about so everyone coming to your retreat and especially those having ayahuasca for the first time um my guess would be that there's a lot of diversity in how people experience it and yeah, what they experience, um, yet maybe some common, common threads, like one common thing I hear and I've, ta I've taken ayahuasca myself, never a dose high enough to really, really open up, but just sort of, uh, low dose. I think, yeah, I did mine in Colombia too, when I was there and, um, yeah, I did feel this sort of light floaty presence of, I knew there was like spirit, you know, I, I had heard people talk about this mother spirit or yeah, it's 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 a real feminine motherly energy. Even just speaking about it, I feel sort of my energy raising. It's 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 quite profound. Um, so I, I felt that sort of the divine mother, let's call it. But yeah, sort of back to the question: what 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 are some common experiences that those who come to your retreat and try ayahuasca for the first time? What do they commonly report experiencing? So ayahuasca experiences, uh, th that's the biggest difference with other psychedelics, right? You know that if you take three grams of mushrooms, you must more or less know what to expect. With ayahuasca, is uh, 
it's always different. Like even, mm. you know, I probably had ayahuasca more than 15 times myself and uh, I've never had the same experience twice. Right. And then if you have a group of people, like our retreats are on average 15 to 20 people. And then we do word circles after every ceremony. And uh, the the variety and the diversity of the experiences is is huge. There are some common threads that I could talk about, but but generally it's kind of like it's thousands, if if not more, of different kinds of experiences. And but but generally it would have it could it could be visual, it could be some kind of information either in like for the form of words or or messages or it can be feelings in your body, it can be pain, it can be pleasure, it can be euphoria, it can be it's it's just so so diverse and it can be a mix of all of those and but generally what um, what you get from ayahuasca is um, is is information in some sh- some shape or form which then helps you to to um, to change your life for the better uh, and uh, people really focus on visuals a lot I guess it's the, the the popular culture is like oh you know psychedelics tripping and like you get you get this you know on YouTube you see those vi- videos of people describing their visions and they're always fractals and like beautiful patterns and you do get those but those are less less important what's what's uh you might have you might just be lying there feeling pain in your legs for no reason for a couple hours and then you get this huge revelation about some trauma that you had or um it's not always also about healing you can also use ayahuasca for growth you know and, and understanding what to do with your life and yeah. Basically, it's so diverse. I don't know what, where to start, but um, mm, mm. it can be people talking to their ancestors, or people talking to the spirits, or people getting to meet the god. It's it's kind of like, in in all honesty, the 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 realms and the, the the complexity of the world to which you go on ayahuasca, I believe, is more complex to this to this more complex than this actual reality in which we are right now. So it's kind of almost as if you ask me. Tell me about like how the world works. <laughs> one one yeah. question. Very yeah. complicated. <laughs> sure, sure. I'm sure that's a question some people actually go into an IOS retreat with that question. Like <laughs> why 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 is life even here? Or you know, these real big questions. Who is God? I want to meet God. Um, who am yeah. I? Who is myself? I, I, I wanna I can try and answer that question based on um more than thousand people that drank ayahuasca with us and some of them like it's not like we tell them um here's how it works and here's what you should believe like the the uh, the difference between ayahuasca for example and the religion is that in religion uh they have a sacrament and then they tell you what to believe in you need to believe that somebody had a vision in ayahuasca you have a vision and then you come back and you tell us what you've seen and uh i think more than 10 people mentioned without us asking that we are here uh, so my understanding so far is that we are souls that come to earth to learn a lesson like understand something and then we go back somewhere else and it can be like uh, described in, in many different forms from like mothership and like uh, we come here and then we leave to like there's many different ways of describing it, but the the subject so far, like uh, from people that have visions about that, is that we're here to learn something. It's kind of like we're here to we like infinite universe, God in itself that like splits itself into pieces to experience reality, and then you go back to 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 one. And then when you drink ayahuasca, you sometimes experience that feeling, I guess, of being one. You feel like you've died and and you're you're that so it's it's very i know it's very spiritual and ayahuasca doesn't have to always be spiritual like one of the things we pride our, pride ourselves at lawara at our retreat is that we're very down to earth and we we prefer to focus on like oh you have depression you know let's let's help you fix that you have uh anxiety let's help you fix it uh, or maybe you don't have a direction in your life like, let's help you find it but uh whether you like it or not ayahuasca journey begins with like healing connection to yourself and then and then growth and then eventually you come to those spiritual realizations and uh, um you can't avoid them uh those those things like questions about like what happens after we die for example mm. absolutely yeah fully resonate with what you're saying because i've got the same message in my in my own direct experiences not necessarily with ayahuasca 
But that, that exact same thing as us being a soul that's come to earth here to learn lessons, fully resonate with it. Um, awesome. Yeah, cool. Um, and then on this, what else did I have here? I was wondering. Oh, yeah. So let's say those. Oh, yeah. I, I got to make a disclaimer here. So uh, this isn't medical or health advice. We are not professionals. Cool. <laughs> Just have to say that uh, for the video uh, and legal reasons. Um, I was wondering, so for those who, let's say they're depressed, anxious, they come here specifically for like healing trauma or some sort of deep rooted psychological issues. Um, in my experiences and observations, um, I don't know if it's fair to compare traditional psychedelics to ayahuasca. So let's just focus on ayahuasca as a plant medicine. Um, with ayahuasca, treating these deep rooted psychological issues, what can happen um, and I don't know, you'd have more um, insight on this than I do, but is you come to an ayahuasca retreat, you have a very eye-opening experience. Um, you know, I often hear people sharing, wow, you know, I really opened up. I actually felt happy for the first time. I didn't realize how depressed I was. Stuff like that. So I've heard, heard that before. But then there's the, in spiritual circles that um, I've been involved in or hippie communities, whatever you want to call them, it doesn't matter. But um, I've often heard, that integration it's like the biggest buzzword out there you know you can have an experience but then what about the integration process so after you now leave the retreat and you've had the the profound experience what happens then because that seems to be and both in my direct experience as well where a lot of the real work happens because then our mind patterns come back in uh all our old sort of memories emotional um emotional states so i'm, I'm curious what you have to share on the integration process like what do you know about it any thoughts on that so that we can take that profound experience and actually turn it into long-term change any thoughts on that integration is exactly as you said taking the the short-term visions and making them into long-term change in your life uh we take integration seriously at lawira and uh i know this is uh this is my own journal so it's a little yeah uh drawn over but basically this is what we give to people at the retreat ah, uh, i made it myself and it's a ayahuasca integration journal and it's basically a guide that helps you integrate your experience so written integration is one of the one of the ways of doing it and it's um just helps to sort of save the raw information and then like start processing but uh so first of all like how ayahuasca works and how it worked for me personally you get you come in with a certain pain. Let's say in my example, like I came to Ayahuasca for healing. And once again, you don't have to come to Ayahuasca for healing. You can come to Ayahuasca for growth or connection or spiritual reasons like you want to explore. But I came to Ayahuasca for healing. Um, I had pain, right? Depression. Uh, the symptom was, you know, sadness, not knowing what to do, uh, not, just not feeling good. So first of all, what Ayahuasca did, and as you described in, in your experience, people just come and they like realize, yeah, life is great. Like, look at the grass is green and the nature is beautiful and life is great and worth living. Um, and that, that happened to me as well. So it took away the pain just magically. Yeah. Like, Unfortunately, this part doesn't last long enough. So if you just allow it to take away the pain, but then you do nothing about it, the pain will come back. Yeah. But then ayahuasca also, it doesn't just take away the pain. It also gives you messages in the form of vision. Sometimes it's just direct instructions. And it's hard to explain, but you do get information. This is where the integration comes comes through. You you write the cell information down, you process it, you think about it. You integration can be as simple as just thinking about your experience or thinking about your life. This is integration. It's kind of taking something from short term memory and putting it into long term memory. Taking something from an instruction to actual to to an action. So in my case, it was. Uh, I was looking, one of the reasons that I was depressed was lack of direction in life. And it gave me that direction, which was, which led to me starting this retreat, right? Because it was, it was, it had largely to do with um, uh, people and their healing. So, and, and sometimes it will give you instructions and it can be about the relationships or maybe career choice or many, many different things from, you know, your family life. So you just need to, um, act on those and this is also part of your integration of doing the homework yeah yeah amen amen 
yeah, I don't have too much more to say on that apart from maybe, yeah, in my direct experience, I've found, yeah, integration to be the main thing. So I think I had, yeah, I had my first ayahuasca retreat in Colombia four, four years ago, something like that. Um, soon we'll kick us off shortly, but I'll just restart the call in about five minutes. Um, yeah, had my first iOS retreat about four years ago, but I found, and, and it was great. The main, the main changes have occurred when I've adopted, uh, exactly what you said, actually a journaling practice. That's been a huge one. And then, uh, self-inquiry. And this is just for anyone who's listening, uh, who may benefit, uh, self-inquiry. So that's, again, I usually have a piece of paper or it's even just sitting by myself and I'll ask these deep contemplative questions, you know, like, why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? Um, you know, is desiring the thing I want really going to get me to where I want to be? Um, and then question, questioning the nature of ayahuasca itself, all these sort of deep questions have really helped, um, yeah, help me progress. And then one, one thing I've been really looking for is freedom from suffering. It was actually, that was one of my main intentions in the ay ayahuasca retreat was why did my mom suffer so much only to die? I was so sort of rattled by that experience of my mom, yeah, dying that I, I, yeah, I asked, I asked the ayahuasca, like the, the spirit and it, it, it replied with like a, you're not ready for this just intuitively. Now nah, it, it sort of like blocked it out and I was a bit, oh, not a bit, I was disappointed, <laughs> but uh, in retrospect, it was what it was. And I accept it completely. And it was only later in my life that I did the integration work that finally it came out, all the grief come up. Um, about my mother and eventually coming to a place of acceptance, but that required me and and my efforts to really get to the core of that, bring it out, um, and then accept it. So yeah, I think integration's very important, and I and I love that you've created a journal there at your retreats, and, and you know put your love into it. I can see just from the, the cover there, like it's something you really take seriously, and and I, I think that's just a, a fantastic, um, if not essential, uh, part of any ayahuasca retreat or those coming into it for the first time so yeah one of my goals with um with the journal is to also get people to the journaling habits obviously guided integration is like series of questions that that you get asked that that help you unravel your experience because sometimes it's hard for people to start journaling when they've never done it yeah but then there is a part which is just a free flow journal where you just journal yourself and i guess my dream is that after that people will pick up journaling and actually do it every day even after even after ceremony ceremony and the retreat ends and i liked what you said there is like ayahuasca told you like oh you're not ready and it's interesting because it happens also over and over again where let's say somebody comes in and they have a very serious trauma ayahuasca finds a way to give them information like piece by piece that they like understand what happened but not like quickly and like uh drastically enough where it like re-traumatize them or like makes them really go in a, in a bad place so it's interesting that 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 i was kind of like it's it's a sort of a self-guiding self-controlling self-limiting uh thing and it's like people say we don't really know how it works like you can say it's a plant spirit as per indigenous tradition with which we work like our shaman is um He's from a Colombian jungle and he he comes from the tradition. That's how he explains it. Other people say it's like you're talking to God. Other people say you're talking to your subconscious. Like and we don't know how it works, but um what we do know is it works and it works amazingly well. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. All right, we'll have a short interim. I'm gonna exit this call and, and we'll restart it. Uh we'll chop it together. But yeah, next I'm curious to speak about the business side of things. Your life is like an entrepreneur slash business owner, however you identify. And um, yeah, very curious about some aspects of that and what you've got envisioned long-term for the retreat. And then, um, yeah, we'll go from there. Sound That's good? good. Let's, do, let's do that. Yep. Cool. All right. All right. Beautiful. We are back. So cool. So the business, the business aspects, love this topic. Um yeah. I, by the way, I've, I've been following your page here from Australia and the way you yeah, market the business, I think is fantastic. And it's something I noticed when I, I first met you. Absolutely fantastic at like offering value. Like you're really good at that. And I can see that you really understand who you're serving, what their, you know, their mind state is. And and yeah, you do a fantastic job of that, by the way. Um, It's, it's really great to see. Thank you, Brandon. 
Yeah, no, it's it's stellar. Um, and the photography and it's, it's and... a huge compliment. Uh, do, by the way, do you know that uh, my chief facilitator is is from Australia? Oh, cool! Oh, fantastic! Yeah. yeah. So at the yeah. moment, there's there's a ceremony happening actually, uh, and uh, it's all run uh, by obviously my shaman and the, the team that I've yep. trained, and one of them, the the guy that runs the show when I'm not uh, when I'm not there, he's uh, he's from Australia, so yeah. I do seem to have uh, Australian people um, coming to my life. Ah, you know, interesting, interesting, and, interesting. <laughs> and 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 I know you played a pretty crucial role in my life as well. I, I'm sure you know the story, but we we yep. we're not going to share yep. it with your listeners. Sure, <laughs> sure. No, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Funny how that all came about, eh? Um, yeah. So, well, I, I'm curious actually on that. Um. Yeah, it's up to you how much you want to share, but I'm very curious, like you've got a family now from what I understand, which wasn't the case back mm -hmm. when I met you. And um, yeah, you're now running this business. You, you've trained a team to help, you know, run it for you. Um, I'm curious, like, yeah, a lot of people I think would be wondering, especially those who are sort of thinking about starting a business or are in business. Um, how are you, again, it's that work-life balance. How are you raising kids mm -hmm. as well as, attending to your partner and then running this business and helping a team. Okay. So those are like 10 questions in one. Uh, let me start <laughs> with the beginning. Yeah. Running an ayahuasca yeah. retreat, or I, I think largely running any spiritual business is very, very difficult because there is a lot of stigma attached to spirituality where for some reason people think that maybe you're not, you don't need money for some reason. Like, oh, you can just, you know, live live off uh i don't know uh spiritual ayahuasca energies and stuff like that so it's a, it's a little tricky um running an ayahuasca retreat is like running a hotel because you need to host people running a restaurant because you need to feed people running a, uh, a spiritual retreat running a psych ward because it's it's very interesting the the work you need to do when people are deep in their process so it's so many things all together and like we also have a gym and an ice bath and like it's a big property like it's also like running a farm and a gym and <laughs> many many wow. many yeah. many aspects of it. so and and obviously uh we do make money with the retreat and uh, uh most of it just gets reinvested straight back in because it's a passion project uh and there are there are many ways of making money that are much easier than this so that's 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 what that's all i can say about the the nature of the business but what what I as you said about the the work that we have done and, and the offering value, my goal is that after I had ayahuasca myself and it really helped me with my life, you get that zeal to basically have as many people as possible do ayahuasca as well, so then their life can change. And you know, like a wet dream of any uh, retreat operator or any person that works with any psychedelics, I'm sure, is to have one day a reality where you wake up and everyone in the world has done ayahuasca and everyone is chill and and nice and like mindful and just loving and etc so of course in order to do that what we are doing here at lawira is trying to offer the retreats uh, affordably because obviously if you put a high price tag most people can't afford it so it kind of like yeah uh, denies the the whole fact of like spreading the the thing so uh we are an average ayahuasca retreat price is somewhere between fifteen hundred dollars and twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, U.S. Australian, I don't know, but and uh, as of now, we're able to offer a one week retreat with a pickup with food, with lodging, four ceremonies for five hundred ninety five dollars. I don't know how long how long or more we'll be able to do that. The price will probably go up because you know inflation and. Yeah, it's it's very yeah. difficult, like the amount of people you need to employ and, and the wages you need to pay. But we're really like trying to keep it's kind of like fighting against the, the price increase constantly and like being very creative. Uh, yeah. So that's that's yeah. uh, that's uh, regarding offering value. And um, but yeah, that's that's the nature of running a business. And as you said about my family, well, we all live at the same property where the, the retreat is actually happening. It's very interesting dynamic because. I kind of have three kids, right? I have two boys and then an ayahuasca retreat. That's another <laughs> baby that would, that yeah. would then last uh, a bit more than last two and a half years. We had two kids and an ayahuasca retreat. So it's been really busy, uh, really lacking sleep, 
but uh, <laughs> yeah i'm i'm kind of believing that what what we lose in sleep and um and the the rest i kind of i'll get i'll get repaid with like karmic uh, bonuses that i'm gaining from you know helping helping a lot of people that's kind of like that's another subject i can talk about as well uh, sure. another belief that i sort of picked up along the way but uh like having kids and an ayahuasca retreat is actually very unique for them i believe to grow up because every month we host in somewhere between 50 60 people on like three different retreats and they get to meet a lot of people from all over the world that look different, speak different, and they kind of see them all as friends. So my kids, whenever we go out to a restaurant, for example, they they don't understand the idea of everyone not being their friend. They just like they see people as friends because like people come to to, to their home and everyone is always friendly and they hang out with them. So it's uh, it's interesting. You know, sometimes the, my older son, he goes in the restaurant. We we go to the restaurant. He goes to any table, starts hanging out with people. And some people <laughs> like it, right? Because he's a cute yeah. little kid. But some people are like, you know, what is wrong with this kid? Why is he so? Because there is there is no differentiating between like, oh, yeah. my friend and just a random person. So yeah. I guess that's an interesting thing. But generally, um, so every more or less two thirds of every month we have people over and then the other time the people are away and that's that's the time we use for building and then improving things so it's very busy but it's kind of like you're busy and i feel like i'm running on my 100 percent. but at the same time i feel kind of happy most of the time not always like today was a pretty yeah. interesting day for me for some reason like i was i was in i was in a bit of a low but generally like you're going hundred percent, but you feel sort of happy because you you know that where you're going is good for you and also for others, and it's a very satisfying business. Like it's um, it's definitely a business, but because you get so much great gratitude in return, it really fills your vessel up, and like you can go further than before. Like I I would, I generally didn't ever like to work too much. Like I'll yeah. be honest about that. And uh, since starting this retreat, like you can't make me stop working now it's the now it's the opposite problem but yeah that's um <laughs> yeah i hope i'm answering your your absolutely your big question. Yeah. absolutely yeah now that that offers some great insight into it perfect um awesome cool um all right awesome yeah so i, I reckon we'll we'll start rounding up here and um i'm actually i'm, I'm very curious uh i feel called to ask this one you mentioned earlier about how a lot of people have these experiences where they they learn that we're here as souls and we're on earth to learn lessons. So now, regardless of whether you've had this experience through ayahuasca or, or some other medium, um, I, I've and I've heard this, there's a, a YouTube channel called Jeff Mara, and it's just people like every day sharing their near-death experiences. And this always comes through. It's such a common theme that we're here as souls on earth to learn lessons. So mm -hmm. I'm curious, like, maybe as a, a roundup question and then I'll ask you where people can learn more about you and your retreats. But this one, like, why do you, if you're open to this question, why do you think we're here on earth? Um, and what lessons do you feel you're here to learn? That's a good question. Uh, I think that your, your sort of lessons are set in uh, childhood. Uh, I got dinner delivered. Gracias, amor. Ah, lucky, lucky. <laughs> uh, I think that we get um, we get our lessons set in childhood when you get born in a set of a when oh, when I need to lower my voice a little bit. I'm being heard. Uh, okay. Yep, uh, we'll finish up shortly anyway. Yeah, we get, we get our lessons from um, from the childhood because I, I guess we we get born in a family with certain problems that shape us to be uh, grow to grow up with certain questions, and then we have to resolve it. Right. So I guess your lessons is uh, are the mistakes your parents made. Yeah, you need to fix them. But like in a larger question, like why is that important from like a universal perspective? Like 
it kind of like you know when you think about those things it almost feels like your brain blanks out because like you don't have the capacity to understand them but i would i would imagine that it's like if let's say you are one and you're all, all powerful consciousness you break yourself up in like small pieces like I, I i think about it this way you know like you have an army yeah and you train them so you break them in small parts and you make them like simulate fighting each other and in the process they get more experienced so it's kind of like this maybe like universal wisdom is get gets more universally wise by simulating like mini micro human lives like and sending souls to live a li human life to um, to play the game of life to learn something and like get like micro lessons i don't know really I, i'm out stretched here like we, i don't really focus that much on the spiritual side of it because yeah for that we do have a a shaman like a, a proper person that is a spiritual teacher but I, I i like to focus more on like real life problems but i do like to think about those things and i think the next step for me personally in my journey with ayahuasca is also learning more about that about uh, spirituality and uh, maybe like even religion understanding that side of it yeah but yeah uh, that would be my way to explaining it what do you think sure thing uh yeah sure um phew. I, I would just have to say I'm still learning and I don't have have the answer. So <laughs> when I do, I'll let everybody know. But yeah, my well, my, 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 my best know. current inclination based on direct experience is that this whole thing is leading to unity and love among all beings on the planet. And I believe it goes beyond that. But um, yeah, again, I need to await my direct experience to to speak more on that. Uh, Cause yeah, like imagine, I love that song. I think I was listening to it today and, and no, yesterday, imagine by the Beatles where imagine where we're all living as one and we're all in peace, right? Uh, that would just be sort of one energy, one singular energy that's shared amongst all beings. And yeah, I believe that's where it's going. And, and I just I had another realization, you know, like when you play a computer game and when you win, you get bored and you don't want to play anymore. Yeah. What, what if uh, a universal consciousness that is almighty and all powerful is just bored? But creates a <laughs> Maybe. Little, uh, drama making machine, human that's going <laughs> to keep it entertained. Uh, maybe that's that, maybe that's another. Maybe it's less about lessons and more about like a, we're like a telenovela for a <laughs> for a uh, greater consciousness. Sure. In the, I'm very inspired by the Indian yogis and Hinduism, but not specifically Hinduism necessarily, but Indian yogis and enlightenment, that all that sort of thing. And one one thing that's commonly written in holy scriptures is that this is called Leela, uh, which translates to, I think, the divine play. It's like infinite consciousness just playing for the sake of playing. Yeah, it could be, it could be hard. And so, you know, consciousness divides itself into many sort of humans and perspectives. And then we're all, we're all sort of having a a play, a bit of a drama here with our ups and downs and our struggles. And just, just for the heck of it, it can be difficult to see it through that light though. When let's say you're in a real low frequency or depressed state. I know I spent a lot of time in that very existential nihilistic on the negative end, pessimistic, oh, yeah. surely not this, this a play. Why, why would God or ultimate consciousness want this to happen? Um, but I've just got I have, this I have my opinion about what you just said. Uh, you know, like when you're in a car or in the, in the airplane, you can be going like 350 miles an hour and you don't feel anything because you don't feel speed. What you feel is acceleration. So I guess in order for, mm -hmm. our, for us to feel life, we need to go down. And then as you go from down to up, then it's acceleration. And then from up to down, that's deceleration. And you feel it. That's what makes life feeling like living, right? If it would be just like this, then you would feel nothing. You'd just go numb and probably kill yourself. Out of boredom. <laughs> <laughs> sure this is why um this is why women are also in our life to to add some to, to <laughs> bit of, spice, the, a bit of this graph. yeah <laughs> and if you add kids then the graph gets even more extreme <laughs> right but right. this is where life happens in those curves where you feel like oh, whether positive or negative gotcha Awesome, man. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for sharing, and we'll wrap it up here. So, for for yeah, for those listening in who are curious about your retreats, um, where can we learn more? 
I think the best way is just to Google ayahuasca in Colombia. And it's Colombia, not with double O, Colombia. It's not Colombia with you. Uh, and I sh think we should be somewhere higher up because our website is ayahuascancolombia.com. Uh, yep. The retreat is called La Huayra. Mm -hmm. This is how you spell it, La Huayra. Uh, I can tell you about the name as well, but I don't think that's um, that, that would be interesting for people. But so yeah, lawira.com or ayahuasca in Colombia. You should find us somewhere in the Google. We have uh, La Huayra Ayahuasca on Instagram, La Huayra on YouTube. Uh, we have a Facebook group as well. So if you search for Loira and I was in Colombia separately or together, you should uh, be able to find us. Okay. Awesome. I'll leave your links below. Uh, and yeah, that's a wrap. Cheers. Cheers. And if you guys uh, hope you can, uh, if you're curious about ayahuasca, come over and uh, Brandon, you're invited as well when you're back in Colombia. <laughs>